Hello, I'm Richard Zachariah, and welcome to the series of interviews we've called Life Changes. I'm talking to a marvellous woman who launched her acting career at the age of three, against the surprising backdrop of an Aussie pub. Now, 50-something years later, Maggie Kirkpatrick is an Australian icon, perhaps best known for her role as the freak in the Australian drama series Prisoner. But the road to success hasn't always been smooth for Maggie. Over the years, it has in fact been punctuated by a series of personal setbacks. So, how did it all begin? I guess I was just born a show off, it seems to be, because it was the same all through school. I was always the class clown. Not brilliant academically. In fact, I was only, only did well in things that interested me, which was English and history. Never, ever did I pass maths. Ever. Not ever. And, uh, but English and history, yes, I shone, but always the distractor, you know. I could always find some way to get out of work in the classroom and distract the teacher or be sent out of the classroom, showing off. Mm. So, Miss Kirkpatrick sort of left school without an academic record? Yeah, Margaret Anderson left school at the age of 14 and 10 months um, because I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. And yet I remember so clearly the day I went to the headmistress with papers to be signed and she said, oh my dear, it's girls like you we need in this school. <laughs> I said, you should have told me that three years ago. You know, she had made me feel quite unwelcome, uh, I felt. Well, not from the 14, but say from the three-year-old stage, yes. we go 50 years on, yes. and you're still performing. Why? Yeah, well, I Why don't know how to do anything else. I've passed the point of no return, well and truly, because I don't think anybody wants to retrain an old thespian of 57. <laughs> but, yes, I'm still doing it, Richard. Um, it's a love-hate relationship, it really is. Uh, it doesn't get any easier because my expectations of myself become greater and uh, other people's expectations of me also become greater. So, where once upon a time an opening night was a fun thing, an opening night for me now is total trauma. It's hideous. But yet, I love it. You've always so, said that, haven't you? That, yeah. you? that you'd like to do something else, but there's nothing else that you can do. Not really. I mean, years ago, all I ever wanted to be was a nurse. But then, you see, now that was in the 50s, when if I had gone ahead with that, I would have had a profession for life, as people did growing up in the 50s. We were very fortunate. I, I don't think we thought we were fortunate at the time. We all seemed to rebel against it and think it was a grey period. But in essence, we had such employment here. And if I had chosen to be a nurse or a teacher or a lawyer or a doctor, I would have had that career for life. Heaven knows I'd have been a dried up old hospital matron by now, probably. <laughs> but I, I always wanted to do something like that. And there's still, oh, I guess, you know, the bleeding heart is, is there. You know, or you could have been a prison warder. Ah, uh, never. Which brings up, I mean, never. we have to talk about th that early on. Sure. The freak. Sure. Why? The most important part of my life opened a lot of doors for me. I can't, and I shall never deny it. I just wish that, you know, the world at large remembered that I do do other things, you know. I, but then that's just the power of television, you see. When, Things, when was it? Let's put it back in context. 1982. But, it was four and a half years out of 37. Yes. So it really is only a little drop, isn't it? But it became... Why did it become such a Oh, drop? God knows. People's need to, to, to love to hate or... Uh, well, there's the whole success of the series, isn't there? The, I guess the voyeurism of women behind bars or whatever. But I had no idea that it would be the huge success that it, that it became or, or that my character would be. I signed a three-month contract. Why do you think particularly your character became so? You must have done it well. I like to think that I did. I like to think that I did. Um, it was awfully hard work. Not so hard finding that character because, I mean, let's face it, put an ugly uniform on me and slick my hair back and, and there's the physicality of it. 
But what I tried to do with that character was find areas that, I mean, nobody is all that bad, not even Joan Ferguson. And, you know, I know that there are prison officers like her, but there are also prison officers like the Meg Morris character, you know. There are the, the caring, nurturing prison officers, I believe. But Ferguson, you know, I mean, my brief was to play a sadistic, corrupt, bulldike screw in the words of the uh, creator. But I also had to show some vulnerable sides to her and thankfully the writers enabled me to do that. And then there was the, the political correctness or incorrectness of playing a lesbian. Um, a lot of people didn't care for the way I portrayed her. They thought it was stereotypical. I didn't think so at all. I didn't think so because uh, the writers introduced a love interest and when that love interest broke up, I, I refused to use uh, hackneyed words or, or, or stupid words that, that the male writers seemed to think I should use. I said, look, the breaking up of a relationship is the same no matter whether it's a man and a woman, two men or two women. The pain is the same and so the dialogue is the same. So I felt very true. To, to that aspect of this sad creature's life. I mean, she was a pathetic creature, let's face it. You know, you born loser in personal life, you know, a born loser. And ultimately a loser within the system that she adored so much for some inexplicable reason. And you became this icon in the gay community. Seemingly, yeah. And then, at the Tilbury Hotel, I think, in Sydney, you yeah. came out and, ah. as, a, as, a, as a straight, as a heterosexual. Oh, wasn't that amazing? You see, you can't win in this life. Yes, and, and it was, I was attacked by the gay press for standing up there talking about ex-husbands, ex-lovers, grandchildren, cooking, gardening. I mean, it was just appalling, <laughs> the, the reaction from that particular little rag. Um, that was not the reaction of very influential senior members of the Sydney gay and lesbian community. Um, they were appalled by that. There was talk of my taking action against them and then I thought, no, why give them any publicity? Who's ever heard of them anyway in the world of journalism? Um, it did get a bit sticky when a quote was printed in one of the daily press, well, the, the tabloid daily one, um, and the quote was that I had passed myself off as a lesbian in order to gain an audience. Now that is really impugning my integrity as an actor. Mm. It hurt me, mm. it hurt me until I realised just how petty and stupid simply two people in what, the entire Sydney say? community... What did they actually say? They just said it was... Well, they castigated me for being straight. Yes. That's right. As you, as <laughs> how dare said. she? How dare she be straight? Mm. Well, nobody in the Sydney gay and lesbian community was ever under any other impression other than that I was this straight old Sheila, you know, with, with grandchildren who ran around like a fool every Mardi Gras period raising hundreds of thousands of dollars. So there's an irony here, isn't there? The, after having raised money for mm. the AIDS community. Oh yes, well, I mean my, my relationship with that community has been a love affair for years. I mean, uh, I have met... Some of your best friends. The, my best friends, absolutely, but the bravest people truly bravest and most dignified people I have ever had the good fortune to meet. Sadly gone now, but uh, there's still an army of people out there still battling this dreadful disease called AIDS and living with the, the HIV and doing very well, doing very well. But years ago when I became involved with them, it was not such the case. There was a lot of fear, there was a lot of prejudice, a Huge great prejudice. deal of prejudice. Mm -hmm and enormous ignorance um, and of course from ignorance comes fear and prejudice and I just felt that perhaps given the notoriety or the, 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 the sort of public face that I had I could be of some assistance